With all the crazy stuff going on this year, invasive species have been one of the topics on people's radar. And if you live in the western United States, you've probably seen one of these guys. While the giant Asian hornet has made headlines out on the west coast and caused national hysteria, allow me to introduce you to the invader that we're dealing with out here in the east. The hammerhead worm is like something straight out of a science fiction movie. And its invasion has been largely silent because unlike the surface dwelling Asian hornets, these guys dwell deep under the ground and are rarely actually seen by people. The invasion of the hammerhead worms is a much more complex problem than that of the Asian hornets. These guys are significantly harder to kill and due to their subterranean nature, you can never actually tell how big the population is. Where you can squish a hornet, crushing, cutting, and pretty much any physical damage that you cause to a hammerhead worm will only result in it splitting into multiple more hammerhead worms. So if anything, attempting to kill them through normal means results in increasing the population. Not only are they nearly impossible to kill, but these guys have no natural predators and their population here on the East Coast, especially here in North Carolina, is absolutely exploding. What's more, you can't even touch these guys. Hammerhead worms are one of the only terrestrial animals known to produce a neurotoxin known as tetrodotoxin. My story with hammerhead worms begins several months ago. I released this video where I documented my first ever encounter with this invasive species. Back then, I knew little to nothing about these crazy animals and actually released the hammerhead worm back into the wild, not realizing that it was invasive. Back in March, I saw only one. But now, this decorative garden in my backyard is ground zero to a silent invasion in which the very ecosystem of my backyard hangs in the balance. I'm on a mission today. Today, I'm back at this garden where this old antique plow is, and what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna be seeing how many hammerhead worms I can find, and I'm gonna be harvesting them because these guys are invasive, and uh, we can't have them ravaging this garden. So, got a jar. We're gonna be holding them in here and drying them out overnight. All right, so there are tons and tons of bricks out here, and half of them are filled with ants, but I'm betting another half of them are also filled with hammerhead worms. I have been seeing these guys absolutely everywhere, on the street, underneath all kinds of debris here in my backyard, and this is the spot that I see them most often. So I'm thinking we're probably gonna find quite a few in here. So I guess all we have to do is start getting flipping and see what we can find. Oh, there's some. Oh, we got three under here. All right, so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna need to get a stick because I can't get skin to skin contact with these hammerhead worms without having any issues. See, their slime is actually neurotoxic. I don't wanna touch it with my bare hands. I'm gonna need to get some kind of stick, some kind of extra thing or utensil so I can sort of pick them up, put them into the jar and collect them. All right, let's get you into the jar where you belong. Let's get your buddy out of here. Let's make sure there's not any more hiding in here. Oh man, there's another one. We've got one and then two. And this one's a big one too, it looks like. Let's see if I can get them out. They don't move very fast, fortunately. Decent sized one at least. When they get covered in dirt like this, they're really hard to pick up. He's almost like a stubby one. Like a, a bigger one got cut in half or something. Let's make sure anything underneath here. No. Let's get you two. Look at that. Bucket full of hammerhead worms. A quick glance at this creature will reveal that it's no ordinary worm. Hammerhead worms often stick to various surfaces and they don't really squirm around like most worms we're used to seeing here in the United States. Their slow, creeping movements 
have actually had them compared almost to a slug, and it gets its name from that fan-shaped head reminiscent of that of a hammerhead shark. The hammerhead worm will creep around a surface, underground or on rocks, scanning with that head, just like a metal detector, only instead of metal, this head is smelling for chemical trails. Much like the way a centipede hunts, these hammerhead worms don't rely on vision, but rather scent, following their prey, typically earthworms and slugs, throughout their subterranean environment. And the way they eat is absolutely disturbing. On this channel, we've seen assassin bugs and spiders, which inject venom into their prey, dissolving them from the inside out. But these hammerhead worms take the opposite approach. They dissolve their prey from the outside in, using their potent toxin found in their slime to eat away at their prey's skin so that the hammerhead worm can absorb their nutrients. All right, this brick is clean. This one back. Crazy thing about these worms is nothing eats them. See, these guys will live right alongside the ants because their slime is so toxic, even the ants, which eat anything, they can't eat the hammerhead worms. Nothing out here eats them, and they are a significant predator of earthworms, so they are, their population is absolutely booming. And wow, there's a decent sized one. Look at the size of that hammerhead worm next to my hand. That is an absolute giant. And there's a little mini one over here, very stubby. Like, look at the size of this one. It's almost like a piece of him got cut off and it grew into that one. That is absolutely metal. And there's even a tiny baby one right there. That is crazy. Let's see this one. Oh, wow, huge one. Whoa, hold on. Look at the size of that. Look, look at the size of this hammerhead worm. It is massive. That's probably about nine, eight, nine inches long when it's fully stretched out. That is what you'd expect from an adult hammerhead worm right there. And to think that like six months, six, seven months ago, I only saw one of these guys. This is a very common occurrence right now and that is absolutely insane. After only about an hour of flipping bricks, this is the result. This writhing mass of land planarians are all of the hammerhead worms that I captured today. And after this video is finished filming, they will be terminated. I am not an advocate for the killing of wildlife. However, these hammerhead worms do not belong in the local ecosystem and are therefore not technically wildlife. What you're looking at is give or take 30 hammerhead worms. And given that only a few months ago, I only ever found one in this little garden, this is an indication that that population is absolutely exploding. Without a shadow of a doubt, there are definitely more of these creatures out there in this garden. However, removing these individuals from the environment will make a significant dent in their invasion. The best way to dispatch hammerhead worms you find in your gardens is by using salt or acetic acid, which you can find in vinegar. It's a little bit messy, so I'm not going to show it on camera, but as soon as this camera goes off, these guys are going to be dissolved. Before I go, I want to remind you that these guys are invasive animals. If you find them in your garden, you cannot ignore them. They will only explode, making more and more hammerhead worms that are going to damage the local ecosystem. Use some sticks, tweezers, whatever you can find. Pick these guys up and make sure you dissolve them with salt or vinegar. That way, you can assure that each hammerhead worm is not going to go on to produce more of these toxic invaders. That's all for today, so if you like backyard wildlife, check out the link on your screen. I hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.